find fascinating about this guy, an international food star, food celebrity chef, who has dietary issues, which is like... I got Lyme disease. That's crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually allergic to beef. Beef makes him shit his pants. I have three times the amount of underwear most human beings have. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Nike Dry Fit, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it wicks away all the moisture. <laughs> So one of the uh, shiniest, newest, and most successful immigrant communities in New York these days is uh, <laughs> white Brooklyn. This community is very rare. Very, very rare. Everybody got coffees out here. Everybody got coffees, they got dogs, mad dogs, peep the dog game. And one of the places these 2014 Christopher Columbus types really like is Bushwick. We in Bushwick and we're walking the Momo Sushi right quick. See what these dudes are cooking up. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How's it going? Man, good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Brooklyn good. Nets fan. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, Best no. team in the world, oh, man. No. If I knew you were going to rock the Brooklyn Nets hat, I might not have come. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, yo, how did you start all this? I've been working in restaurants for, uh, you know, 27 years. Seeing the success of Roberta's, it's a no-brainer to open up a restaurant on yeah. this street. Now, like, Bogart's kind of the main vein here. Five, six years ago, there was nothing. Five years ago, there was, there's hookers all over Bushwick. Yeah. And now, I mean, not so many hookers, more artisanal foods. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what's the first course? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Uh-huh. Four. Nice. Four. That's so number one, baby right. yellowtail, right? Uh, I think this is one. That's one. One, two, three. Shoot, no, yeah, I, I think it's backwards. one, two, three. No, he did. He's one, two, three. Really? Yeah, I got it all fucked up, man. Yeah, because that's not the bream. One. Where's the bream? Huh? Sea bream. Sea bream this one. Okay. So, sorry, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Nice. How many times a week do you fly in from the Japanese fish market? In general, once, but sometimes twice. Sometimes it comes late Thursday, and then sometimes it comes Friday morning. Yeah, definitely best time to go to a sushi restaurant, I think, is Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I want to ask you this, and there's no wrong way to answer this. Sure. Is, as a white owner of a Japanese restaurant, like, do you feel extra responsibility? Like, Man, I don't think about it. People take themselves so seriously. They're like, well, I lived in Japan. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, okay, awesome. Like, I'm across the street from yeah. the fucking Boar's Head <laughs> fucking meat factory, okay? In fucking the ghetto. To me, I feel like there does come an extra responsibility yeah. because as a white person doing it, people will come eat that food and then develop a kind of judgment or an idea of that cuisine based on your representation. Yeah. yeah, just for the record though, I don't even consider myself white, I consider myself beige actually. There are mutations happening all over Bushwick and one of them is this young man on a gigantic bicycle. Yo, what is this thing? Yo, 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 this is a troll bike, man. You feel like you're flying, bro. Dude, it's amazing. Yo, so you live in the neighborhood? I've been here yeah. like three years. And How's the residents that were here before the kind of, because Bushwick's been changing and shit. Yeah, I mean, they're still here, but I think a lot of people are getting priced out. Yeah, because people see it's cool and they want to come, you know, be a part of it. Now, the thing to remember, change ain't always bad. One of the businesses trying to be inclusive is the Bushwick Co-op. Hello, I'm Eddie. Hey, I'm Amanda. Nice to Great meet you. Great to meet you. So what, what is a co-op? Like, I know what co-op apartment buildings are. Okay. Like, everybody owns it, but what is a food co-op? Well, a food co-op is done the same way. So we're owned by our shoppers. So people can join four hours of work every four weeks. And when they join, they become a part owner. But because I'm the only paid staff member, so instead of normal grocery store markups, we have lower prices for everything. Um, we have spices, we have bread. The majority of our produce is organic. Avocados are fair trade. 
Okay, so, what does fair trade mean? Um, so fair trade is basically a certification process of bananas. Most of them are like picked by children and like slave labor. So by doing fair trade, we know that the people who are growing the bananas are getting paid fair wages. They're not being exploited. What has been the challenge in this neighborhood? Um, the challenge in the neighborhood is a lot of people speak Spanish. So we're working on translating our signage into Spanish. We're working on doing um, Hispanic outreach. Another thing is like if you don't know what the produce is. Yeah, no, there's never like sustainable, organic, fair trade, like bok choy, dry red chilies for Chinese food. Is there any way for people to solve that? Co-ops take in mind the community that surrounds us, so everything that's on our shelves is because somebody has asked for it. So like we have organic bok choy. We work with farmers and say, hey, we want to see more of these types of vegetables. And because yeah. we're smaller, they don't, don't have to grow a huge crop. So you have very simple supply and demand. For all you people out there like me who complain that dominant culture doesn't provide you the things that you need, yeah. demand it. We didn't have sriracha for a while because it had like preservatives and weird yeah. ingredients, but we found a local company that was using local chilies when in season. There's no funky ingredients and yeah. that's no preservatives. Wow, that's an $8 chili? Yeah. Wow. It sells at other stores for 14 bucks. It's like weed, right? When I was a kid, I would be buying that backyard boogie, $25 for a quarter, but then you start to buy the diesel and it's like $50 for maybe two grams or something like that, but you don't need as much of it, it lasts you longer, you feel much better, and it tastes delicious. Jojo Sriracha, just like Sour Diesel. Look at this, she got it laid out. That's that trap or die butter. Dude, this is what the future should be like though, is like politically correct food. Right. And people will always say, oh, it's too expensive or whatever, but it's living a conscious life. The co-op, the identity changes with its members. The members are the identity. You know, if representatives from different neighborhoods got involved and integrated themselves into businesses like this. I mean, I guess that's how you save the neighborhood. No, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for ice cream. Okay. Thank you for trying to save our food system. Damn, I have a soggy ass foot now. For like solidarity, I kind of want to follow you, but. No, no, don't do it. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, fam. <laughs> We're all all for one. Damn, that was nasty. Ooh, I got a dark foot. Me and my dark foot are going to get in the van now and take you to a Williamsburg institution. Timeless place that hasn't changed in hundreds of years. Yo, so... We're going to uh, a New York institution. I think it's the best restaurant in the world. I got three favorite restaurants in the world. Da Dong in Beijing, Ding Tai Fung in Taipei, and Peter Luger's in Williamsburg. All right, hands down, best restaurant in New York City, best steakhouse in the world. And Peter Luger's has been here for centuries. It is the best at what it does, and it is the quintessential New York institution. So we have, we have something special for y'all, right? Number one, no one's ever shot at Peter Luger. Number two, we got the ill Vice Marvel Universe mashup, right? Your boy Tony Stark is coming through, the head of Stark Enterprises. Most dangerous order in the world. We're gonna order a fuck you bottle of wine, we eat some steak. That's it, that's a perfect New York evening. Can't beat it, it's cash only. You gotta go in with a lot of cash. So, I got a table for two, me and Shane Smith upstairs. I don't know if, if, if it's in the book. It's in the book? Yeah, it's in the book. Where, sure, can yeah, can you show us where we're at? Yeah, you're right here. We're right so. there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank yeah. you very much. Listen, if you come to Luger's, you know you're going to see this face, and he is the gatekeeper. There's a waiter here. He's been here for 50 years. No one turns over. I mean, our maitre d's have been here 20 years. Our Salad guys, 20 years. These are people whose lives have been spent here. So it's all kind of built into the fabric of what makes us us. I'm not trying to change things. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What is it that you think makes this steakhouse the best in We're the world? We're trying to pick the absolute best meat and money is no, we don't cut corners. It's fun, man. They got us in a really cool room up here. Oh, good. Yeah. No, this, this, this I'm just checking out your ass. It's perky. I've been doing Pilates. Oh, shit. I got the slow twitch and the fast twitch. <laughs> and I think we're ready to order. Tomato onion salad, steak for two, cream spinach, 
bacon German hash. This is holy grail food television. This sure. is going to Madison Square. This is the Mecca. This place is an anomaly. It hasn't changed like since the 18 fucking hundreds, whatever it is. I sure. talked to David downstairs and he was like, look, we want you to walk in the door and feel like you're transported back to when this thing started. Here we go. Here's the star of the show. All right, gentlemen. Oh. We have that filet mignon. Extremely hot plate for this Oh. And this is butter at the end? A uh, touch of butter and mostly the juice of the meat. He said a touch of butter, I don't know if that's... That, it's, it's such great presentation, I've got it. Hot sex on a platter. Brown potatoes, so brown potatoes, Please, thank you. Shane, you a filet guy or a strip loin guy? The more fatty the meat, the more I like it. So yeah. I love a porterhouse. It's got not only fat, but the bone. Yeah. I like any meat on the bone. This is the fucking best. It's very good. There's a regular old steak you get at the grocery store. Then there's choice. Most steak houses, nice ones sell choice. Right. The best ones do prime. The ones that want to go above and beyond, like Luger's, they take prime and then they dry age it. They hand pick their steak and they go to all the butchers. Right. But a lot of it comes from master purveyors in the Bronx. How did you learn all this shit? I don't yeah. know. I'm a fat fuck. I, well, I learned a lot from my mom. My mom has a very, very precise palate. She's very, very picky. And my dad was in the food business. He would literally take me to restaurants and be like, Eddie, steal the menu. So he'd take me to menus, ask me for my opinion, tell me to write down notes, and I'd steal menus. And that's how I started in the food business. My dad was researching other restaurants. He wanted to learn their tricks, and we steal the menus. So your dad had a steakhouse, so you grew up eating steak. I grew up eating steak. My dad's specialty was prime rib. I grew up with my grandmother. She ate prime rib or filet mignon and she drank scotch with it. She was like hard fucking core and I never met another woman like her. Her name was Jo. <laughs> Josephine. Yeah. And so now when I have prime rib, it's kind of like that soundtrack of your life, but with food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, the best food takes you back to your there childhood. You go, there. I like to go to restaurants that bring you back to your childhood and all those good memories. You know, I'm curious though, you are actually the number one employer of human beings in Williamsburg. How does it feel? Good. But we first came to Williamsburg, it's a good story. So we started in Montreal and we came down to New York in the dot-com sort of uh, era. So we moved to North Forth because Triple Five Soul gave us part of their warehouse for free. And at the time, this is like 2000, and there was all the crack whores were down there. And they were like $5 blowjobs, like the lowest common denominator shit. We used to be extorted by a crackhead named Crazy Larry. And he would literally shit on our stoop unless we paid him a dollar. So we had to pay him a dollar a day extortion or he would shit on our stoop. You know what I loved about it is Manhattan was right there and here was completely lawless. Like there was no law, there was nothing. Like there was a Coke place here, stayed open all night. You could go buy Coke. What was it called? Cokies. My favorite bar was, there was this, did you ever hear about the checks cashed? Yeah. So checks cashed was two 16 year old kids. They took an old deserted check cashing place on the water. Yeah. 99 cent beers, punk rock on a jukebox, and fucking you just sit by the water and drink Pabst Blue Ribbon for 99 cents. Boom, that's fucking Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn was, for I'd say a decade, the coolest 20 block radius in the world. I like how you just put the, can we get a shot of him putting the bone <laughs> on the table? This is a guy who grew up in a steakhouse here where he's just like, I'm gonna put the bone on the table now. I love you too, dude, I love you too. It's, it's, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Secret. Best fucking restaurant. You know what it is too, this guy here, he's not gonna turn around because they're all bastards, but he makes the best Bloody Mary in all of New York. The best Bloody Mary in the whole goddamn How do you do it, sir? Yeah, what, how do you make it? Can't tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> can, you secret. Show, can you show us? It's a secret. Prick waiters. Like, mean. They're mean to you. Well, here's the thing about Peter Lugers, right? They got the best steak, they got the best sides, they got the best Bloody Mary. Yeah. But the, everybody here, from the servers to the owners to the register woman, they all know they got a big dick. A lot of places you go to that want you to think they got a big dick, or they think they have a big dick, but Peter Lucas has the biggest fucking dick in the game. That's true. 
You know who got the best pork bun? You, Raho. <laughs> Next up on Fresh Off The Boat. Oh, oh, oh. Cousin Dom. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, this is pretty funny shit. Oh, this is funny shit. You have mad options. Though. This so is good. so funny.